Today I'm gonna to talk through some of the most common reasons that your small engine won't start. And this is gonna be applicable whether we're talking about a little two-stroke weed whacker all the way up to something like a, you know, 18 or 20 horsepower riding lawnmower. No matter what your engine, you're gonna need a few things to get it to run. You're gonna need air, fuel, spark, and compression. One of the most common reasons that these little engines won't start is because they're seasonal. You stop using them in the fall and then you break them out in the spring and your gas has been sitting for five or six months and it's just kind of varnished up. If it's an ethanol gas, it's absorbed a bunch of water. It's just bad. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you haven't put some sort of fuel stabilizer in it is just make sure you drain out the gas and put fresh stuff in it. You're really going to want to drain it also from the carburetor float bowl. And this still doesn't guarantee you've solved your gas related old gas problems because it also may have varnished up the little orifices in your carburetor. So these little holes in the jets that you can try to run some cleaner through it, some essentially solvent like sea foam. Some people think it's kind of snake oil. I do think there's some solvent properties that can help break down that varnish if your gas has gone bad. Otherwise, you're gonna have to take the carburetor off, take the float bowl off and just clean everything out really good in there. It usually only takes about a half hour start to finish to do almost any carburetor. If you know you've got good gas, it's also important to make sure that that gas is getting to the engine. So from the gas tank to the engine. A lot of times there's a little shut off valve that you might forget that you turned off when you put your stuff away. Well, just make sure that's turned on. Also make sure that your little fuel filter isn't clogged up. If this thing's getting older, like 10 years old, it's definitely long overdue to have change your fuel filter. Sometimes I'll actually disconnect the fuel line at the carburetor and run it into a little gas can and make sure that it's dripping and running. Most of these are going to be gravity fed. They don't even have a fuel pump. So it's just a matter of making sure that that flows good from the gas tank to that carburetor. Next, what I usually like to do is check the spark. So you'll take your spark plug out and ground it to the cylinder head. So the threaded part, ground that to either the cylinder head or something else that's bare metal and pull it or crank it. Make sure you've got good, strong spark. A lot of these little engines, you know, every few years you're gonna have to change the spark plug. If your spark's not good, change it. And honestly, nine out of 10 times, the two things I just mentioned, will solve your problem and it'll start right up. If you have a manual for your, whatever it is you're working on, it'll usually tell you what the spark plug gap should be. And when you're at the Advance Auto or wherever you go to buy your little $3 spark plug, they usually have a little gapping tool so you can just make sure that you're within the manufacturer recommended range. Just one less thing to have to worry about. Now, if you've changed your spark plug and it still doesn't have good spark, it's possible that it's the ignition coil, or if it's an older, you know, pre-1983 maybe. It may not have a capacitive discharge CDI style ignition. It may actually have points that you have to manually clean. This is probably not the case though. Most likely what you're working on is newer than that, and it's got a pretty basic coil. And in that case, you're just gonna have to replace it if it's the cause of no spark. So you've got good spark, you've got good fuel delivery. It's also really important to make sure you've got good compression. A lot of these little engines get really horsed on, beat on, sometimes people basically never change the oil. So for about 20 or $30, you can get a little compression tester, pull it, um, usually it takes about three or four pulls to get that meter to read where it's gonna kind of level out and not keep climbing. And just make sure you've got good compression. You're gonna probably wanna look up what the minimum compression should be for your engine. A lot of these little six to eight horsepower like rototiller engines are gonna need 60 or more PSI, whereas like a bigger lawnmower engine might want something like 90 or more PSI. 
it's really just going to depend. They're really usually pretty low performance though, so you'd be surprised how low of compression is considered acceptable in these motors. And if you don't have compression, that's when you've probably got bigger problems. It could mean a bad head gasket, could mean stuck uh, piston rings. This is rarely the case, but sometimes that's the case in which maybe you can soak some um, like Marvel Mystery Oil or WD-40 on the top of the piston for 24 or 48 hours, maybe unstick those rings. I would say that's like a one in 20, that that's really gonna work for you though. It could be if it's a four stroke uh, valve train issue where one of your valves isn't closing all the way. There's any number of things that could cause that thing to have bad compression. And in a lot of cases, it's maybe not even worth fixing it. It might be just worth replacing the engine. If you've stored your, you know, say it's a push mower in a shed, you might wanna just make sure you don't have a mouse nest in the exhaust. I've seen this before where a mouse will build a nest and now sure the intake side of things are flowing good, but no nothing's really flowing out of the exhaust like it should. So it's just not gonna start. If it does, it's gonna barely run. Um, it's definitely not gonna rev the RPMs up like it should. So just take a look, make sure there's no occlusion in the exhaust. While you're doing your little tune-up, it's probably worth replacing your air filter too. It's rare that your air filter would be so bad that it wouldn't start. Usually it's going to start fine, but you know, if it's like something that you're running in the dirt or the leaves, like a leaf blower, it is possible to clog it so bad that it just doesn't even want to start. If everything seems fine, you've checked everything out, keep in mind you may have just flooded it. A lot of people don't really know how to operate a choke. So to choke your small engine, sometimes if it's hot out, you don't even need to choke it at all, or you only want to half choke it. When you're trying to start it and it starts to kind of sputter to life, but it doesn't, I often like to turn the choke down to half or even off because that next pull might flood it. So it's possible that it's flooded. In that case, usually what you'll do is you'll turn the choke off and then hold it full throttle while you're trying to start it. And that'll kind of basically give it enough air to balance out that rich fuel mixture. And usually that'll work. Um, if it's massively <laughs> flooded, you could take the spark plug out and pull it a few times with the plug out. But this would be pretty extreme flooding. If your engine won't even turn over, so you're pulling, trying to pull it, nothing happens, or if it's an electric start and it just click nothing, um, it's possible that the engine is seized, and that's another scenario where it's, it's going to be pretty extensive repairs to the point where maybe it is worth it, but it's probably not even worth repairing that engine. This is too simple to mention, but I'll mention it anyways. If it's an electric start and it's not starting, it could be your battery, especially if it's sat for five or six months. Just try charging your battery. Um, you can put a jumper on it. Any of this stuff, if you're not mechanically inclined like at all, be careful. Make sure you look up the safe way to do it because you don't want to crisscross your jumper wires and blow up your battery. It could also be that it's clicking and trying to start and it's not the battery. It could be the starter or that little Romex that engages with the flywheel. Um, so if you've got a good battery, it's still clicking and maybe it clicks five times, then it turns, tries to turn over. That's probably more of an indication that it's a starter, not a battery. I've also seen this happen though with just a low battery where it's just not enough to kick the little spring-loaded part of the starter into the flywheel. I hope this solved your problem. If I didn't mention something that you would consider a pretty common way that these little engines wouldn't start, I'd love to hear it in the comments. If your engine is spilling gas out of it, like your carburetor's leaking gas, make sure to check out my video on how to fix a leaking carburetor. That is insanely common with these little engines. If you like DIY and how-to videos, make sure to click subscribe below. Thanks for watching.